expected to begin. We'll bring you the latest developments just ahead. Day two of Donald Trump's second impeachment trial is underway in the U.S. Senate. So for the latest, let's bring in CP24's Jamie Goodwin. Jamie. And it's been a powerful day so far, Courtney, with several impeachment managers uh, coming on the floor to really describe in detail through not only Trump's own words, but through his tweets, the connectivity uh, that those words had on the January 6th uh, insurrection and the influence that he had on those wave of supporters who ended up storming uh, the Capitol. So uh, everyone is basically laying out their case and they're providing this timeline and a sequence of events and lead house prosecutor Jamie Raskin uh, saying that, you know, basically a uh, president has to be held accountable from their actions from day one uh, when they enter office until the day they leave. Uh, Trump's uh, lead prosecutor Bruce Castor is basically saying his words were just a figure of speech and that he's also focusing his argument and defense of Trump on the question of constitutionality and that it's unconstitutional to impeach a president uh, that is no longer in office and even Raskin cited uh, a report that was signed by 144 con uh, con constitutional scholars calling that argument legally frivolous. Uh, here's a little bit more from Jamie Raskin. We will prove that the impeached president was no innocent bystander whose conduct was totally appropriate and should be a standard for future presidents, but that he incited this attack. And one of the things that the Democrats are really highlighting is, uh, you know, number one, the big lie that for about a, a year leading up to the election uh, that the president was citing the big lie that this election, if he loses, it would be stolen. And also, uh, number two, was to stop the steal of the election. Uh, that was something that he reiterated for months leading up to uh, the election day. And also, number three, was to fight like hell. Those were the words that the president said at the Save Our America march, uh, where he said to everyone, if you don't fight like hell, you don't have a country anymore. At the end of the day, 17 Republicans are going to need to vote in favor with the Democrats to convict the president. That is unlikely to happen. And we're hearing that this impeachment trial could be wrapped up by the end of the week. Back to you for now. All right, Jamie, thank you for the update. 355 minus 5. This is Toronto's breaking news, 5024. The lawsuit brought against Raptors GM Asai Ujiri after the finals championship game in 2019 has been dropped. We'll bring you this developing news right after the break. A lot of Toronto area homeowners replace their windows as a way of transforming the look. The lawsuit brought against Raptors GM Masai Ujiri after the final championship game in 2019 has been dropped. Three regions in the province are now in the green level. We'll have more on what this means in a moment. And in preparation for vaccine deliveries coming to Canada, the city is preparing the sites and staffing to respond. Four o'clock and minus five from 299 Queen Street West. This is Toronto's breaking news, CP24. Hello, I'm Rashmi Nair. The lawsuit against Masai Ujiri stemming from an altercation following the Raptors' NBA Finals victory has been dropped. CP24's Jackie Crandles is here with why. Jackie? Uh, Rashmi, this is the lawsuit that Masai Ujiri's legal team had claimed all along was motivated by frivolous claims and money. Uh, Sheriff's Deputy Alan Strickland suing Masai Ujiri as well as the Toronto Raptors and MLSC. He wanted $75,000 in damages for injuries. injuries. He said he suffered after he was pushed by Ujiri when he was attempting to get onto the court, of course, to celebrate his team's championship win in 2019 in Oakland. That lawsuit is no more. And Mayor John Tory, who was asked about it this afternoon, says this ordeal has ended, quote, the right way. Here's more. I don't think it's a sour ending when the lawsuit is dropped. It's a kind of a sour process that went on because I knew from the beginning, I said months ago, as many people in Toronto would feel, anybody who's ever met this man would know this is a man with the finest of characters. Uh, the video footage really just proved what we all knew to begin with, which is that he wouldn't think of doing anything that was uh, uh, out of hand. He's a role model for many people in this community. He understands that. He lives his life uh, pursuant to that. He's a great uh, team executive and uh, just a proud uh, resident and citizen of this city. So, um, you know, I, I'm sure he has some feelings that, as to what went on and denying him the opportunity to celebrate one of the most historic moments I'm sure he'll face in his uh, sports career.
The officer claimed Ujiri failed to show credentials to get onto the court. The body camera footage that you're seeing here that was released by Ujiri's legal team appeared to show Ujiri, in fact, presenting his credentials. At the time, the Raptor said the video proved Ujiri wasn't the aggressor in this dispute. And today, MLSC released a statement on the news that the lawsuit has been dropped, saying Masai has been completely vindicated, as we always knew he would be. We're disappointed that he and his family have had to endure the past 18 months of worry and uncertainty, but for their sake, we are pleased the legal process has come to an end, and especially pleased that the claims made against Masai and MLSC were dismissed entirely free of any financial settlement. We continue to be deeply troubled by the fact that Masai was put in this position in the first place and believe he should never have had to defend himself. Masai is taking some time to process the ordeal and intends to address it publicly at a later date. Masai Ujiri had countersued uh, Alan Strickland, but that case has also been dropped and uh, criminal charges were never laid in this case. Becky, for now. Thank you, Jackie. Okay.